Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Kim and I are delighted to be able to share with you through this uh, video presentation some information about our annual conference session coming up in June of this year. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you, to working together, to worshiping together as we come uh, to Lake Junaluska once again for our annual conference session. As you know, conference begins this year on Wednesday evening, June the 15th. We start with the clergy session, uh, which is for clergy only. The only lay people who attend that session are those who serve on the conference Board of Ordained Ministry. Our first worship service together with all the lay and clergy delegates happens on Thursday morning, and uh, we are anticipating uh, wonderful worship services again this year as plans have been made. Our theme for the conference is Go Light Your World. We are very much aware of the passage from and the challenge from Jesus that we are to be the light of the world. We are sent to represent Christ, to, to shine the light of Christ into all the corners of this wonderful creation. Our theme verse verses come from Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on a lampstand, and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise God who is in heaven. Well, that's the theme that's going to weave through all of our worship, our work together, Kim. Uh, our conference over the last four years has taken uh, a, 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 as our theme uh, to highlight some of the signs and some of the qualities of what it means to be a vital church. Our core purpose, uh, our reason for being as an annual conference is to increase the number of vital churches that are fully engaged in God's mission in the world. And so over the last four years, we have focused on one one particular quality of what it means to be a vital church. In 2013, uh, we focused on being a missional church, reaching out into the community. 2014, we focused on being a, gen a generous church. Last year, it was being an evangelical church. And this year, being being light to the world, practicing hospitality, representing the love of Christ in the world. Uh, our preachers this year will help us focus on that theme. And once again, I'm excited to bring uh, three friends and three uh, really gifted preachers uh, to our conference. Uh, we begin on Thursday morning with our opening communion service. And Dr. Bobby McLean, who is professor of preaching at Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, D.C., will be uh, our preacher. He will also be preaching at the commissioning service on Friday morning. It's been my privilege to get to know him over the last several years. He is a gifted preacher who who inspires, helps us encounter the gospel in some fresh ways. And I know that we will be uh, inspired and motivated uh, by his preaching. On Thursday evening for our worship together, uh, a good friend, colleague in ministry for many, many years, Dr. Brian Collier, who is the founder, the lead pastor of The Orchard, a United Methodist Church in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, I was the district superintendent when we planted that church and appointed Brian to be the founding pastor. That was in 1998. Since then, that church has grown to have several campuses. Uh, it's one of the largest churches in Mississippi, and we will be uh, blessed by his presence and by his presentation. For our ordination service on Saturday evening, Bishop Cynthia Harvey will be our guest preacher. She's currently the resident bishop at, in the Louisiana Conference. Before being elected bishop, she was the executive director of UMCOR, uh, our United Methodist uh, Outreach uh, and Relief Agency. And in that role, in her capacity there, she and I had an opportunity to do several things together, including being part of a very small team uh, that traveled for a week to Cote d'Ivoire uh, back in 2011. Uh, as always, our conference will end on Sunday morning with our worship experience. The Lake Junaluska Singers will once again be with us. And uh, the worship that enfolds our work together shapes our life and sends us into our business sessions uh, in the spirit and with the spirit of Christ. That's our hope uh, as we move through these days. Well, that's a, a, a very quick overview and introduction to, to our time together at Lake Junaluska. Kim, fill us in on some of those details. So, Bishop, the annual conference will be similar to the way it has been um, for the last several years. We will start, as you said, with a clergy session on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. 
And then everybody will gather on Thursday morning at 1030 for our opening worship and service of Holy Communion. So that's when the clergy and the lay will all gather together for the first time. And then we'll open with our first business session after lunch on that day at 130. We will adjourn at, with the closing worship ser service that you mentioned. It will start at 10 o'clock on Sunday and we will adjourn annual conference by noon on Sunday. So that's kind of the overall schedule when we'll start and when we'll end. The program and reports book will have the full schedule, the detailed schedule both of what's happening in Stewart Auditorium with the annual conference and then also the special event schedule so that you can see all of the other opportunities that go on while we're together at Lake Junaluska. The program and reports book will be posted on Online, and um, you can check that out for lots of these details. But just a couple of other things that people might want to know. We will have registration on the third floor of the Terrace Hotel um, in the auditorium again where lay and clergy will come when they arrive to get their name tags, to get the information, to pick up the supplement that goes along with the other annual conference materials. Registration will start on Wednesday at 1 o'clock and will close on Thursday at 8 p.m. and people can come and go to register during those times. When the annual conference sessions are going on, the business sessions, um, the lay and clergy members are invited to be in Stewart Auditorium. During worship, everyone is invited. So we encourage our guests and visitors to come and worship with us in Stewart Auditorium during all of the worship services. There are some things you've come to count on at the lake that we will continue this year, and one of those are the shuttles. Parking always feels like it's a problem, but it indeed it isn't a problem as long as people will park in the, the lots that they find marked and then ride one of the shuttles. There will be about five different shuttle services. And the good news is I just heard the tram is back. So our youngest visitors will be excited to come to Lake Junaluska and get to ride the tram. It feels like you're at Disney, but also it is convenient and helpful for everyone. So we have about five different ways, different shuttles that we'll pick up at those remote parking lots and bring you straight to the auditorium. We encourage you to use those. We'll also have the food court again this year, and um, so options for eating in the hotels and at the food court during the lunch breaks. We encourage you to bring some cash so that you can uh, stay on campus, not have to fight traffic, and be able to eat lunch together. And if you are staying at Lake Junaluska, the registration is at the Bethea Center for Housing. So you can stop by the Welcome Center on your way in and um, register and get your key for your housing then. As I mentioned, the program and reports book will have lots of information, which will include the consent calendar and the petitions that have been submitted for our consideration. And so you'll want to read those and be familiar with those before you come. A couple of opportunities that we have again this year are for fitness and the Candler 5K Run and Walk will be held by the Emory Club on Thursday morning this year. Um, starting early and registration will be available in advance so you're encouraged to be a part of that fitness opportunity or if you um, want to take it up a notch you can ride your bike to Lake Junaluska this year and that will start on the Monday the week of annual conference from Gastonia and for about three days folks will ride their bikes together all the way to Lake Junaluska um, arriving on Wednesday and there's more information about that as well. As I reference all this information, you will find it at the annual conference website, which is www.ac2016.com. You're invited and encouraged to go to the website to get all of the information about annual conference. I'll close um, talking about annual conference with one of the highlights. In addition to worship, which is always a highlight, another highlight that we're going to have that's special for this year is that we are going to um, celebrate uh, your upcoming retirement and we're really looking forward to doing that together. So in the business session on Friday afternoon, the Committee on Episcopacy will have a report and during that report there will be some special things that happen um, acknowledging your time with us and how um, important your leadership has been with our annual conference. So we encourage folks to be a part of that business session. But then everyone's invited to a time just where we can greet you and speak to you and, um, and celebrate with you and that'll be on Friday evening at 7.30. It'll be in the tent that is between the Herald Center and Stewart Auditorium. And um, so we really look forward to the opportunity to um, be together for this purpose, for annual conference, and to celebrate what God is doing and ha God has done, especially in your leadership um, with our annual conference. Thank you, Kim. It, it's been an incredible eight years, and it's been uh, wonderful to see what God has 
done and continues to do, and I believe God will continue to do uh, through the churches of our conference across the districts and our missional networks and in so many other ways. And uh, honestly, Kim, it's been a, a joy to uh, preside at annual conference and, and know that you're sitting next to me, keeping me straight, keeping me on the agenda, and I'm grateful for you and, and for your presence. Uh, one of the other highlights in our business session that, uh, that I, I simply want to mention so that everyone is aware of it, uh, we've had a, a, an incredible incredible, interesting, fascinating journey with our children's home over the last couple of years. And on Thursday afternoon at that first business session, we're going to have an update on uh, the relationship and the partnership that's being formed between our children's home in Winston-Salem and the Cross North School. And the a new executive director is going to be with us and will be sharing with the conference uh, some of those incredibly hopeful things that are going to happen on behalf of children and families. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm excited about that and have walked we have all walked that journey together over the last couple of years. Uh, every, every annual conference, we have identified a, a special offering that we invite churches to, uh, to receive prior to annual conference and bring it with them. This year, we're doing something slightly different. As we've talked about ways in which we can uh, make a difference in the lives of people and particularly in the lives of children in our communities, uh, our offering this year, and you can read more about this on the website, but uh, our offering this year, we've, we've called it churches plus children plus schools equal transformed communities. And he, here's our plan. We invite every church across our conference to receive a special offering on the first Sunday of June, June the 5th, and almost immediately, the next day, report in to your district office what that offering was. The offering that you receive in your local church stays in your district. So we will ask you to send your offering to the district office. And then the resources that are collected across the district will then be distributed in the district as churches uh, get engaged with children, with schools, and in many ways uh, reach out to transform communities. So then we'll report into annual conference what uh, the total of all eight districts has been and we'll celebrate what I know is going to be a great offering because we're reaching out to touch the lives of children and make a difference in our communities. We will receive an offering on Thursday evening, uh, no, Thursday morning, Thursday morning, Thursday morning of annual conference and again on Sunday morning of annual conference and the offering that we will receive at annual conference will be divided eight ways. We'll distribute that offering equally to all eight of our districts. Uh, we want to challenge you, invite you to uh, participate in that, to make a difference in the lives of children in the schools, in the communities, in the district where your church happens to be located. Uh, well, once again, we look forward to seeing you at Lake Junaluska, June 15th through the 19th. Uh, we ask you to be in prayer for our wonderful conference, uh, to be in prayer for the work that we will be doing together, and to pray that God's Spirit uh, will rest upon all of us, lay and clergy members, as we come together to do God's work at Lake Junaluska. Pray that God will uh, bless each one of you as we prepare ourselves, as we travel, and then as we work and worship together uh, this summer.